Hello hackers! Welcome to video two of the Memory Errors module of Pwn College. I'm Jan and today we're going to be talking about high-level problems that lead to memory errors. As a reminder, in the previous video I talked about how um, Dennis Ritchie, this uh, man on the right of the slide here, created the C programming language. He created it to create utilities for the Unix operating system which he had co-created just several years earlier. Um, and uh, C was designed to give uh, low-level control and power um, to the developer to allow them to write fast code but still use a source code, uh, a high-level language to write it rather than writing it directly in assembly. Um, in Unfortunately, in combination in a way with the um, von Neumann architecture brought to us by the three Johns, um, these uh, figures on the left, um, and von Neumann's architecture's um, kind of uh, seeming thoughtlessness about security, uh, the rise and uh, amazing spread of C has led to a state where we are plagued with memory errors in software even now to this day. Um, so let's look at some of the high-level problems uh, of these errors uh, that lead to these errors. Uh, the biggest problem, kind of the overall general summary, is that C trusts the developer. In Python, if you create a list um, of, with three elements in it and you try to access the 11th element, Python will tell you, no, this list only has three elements. You're not accessing the 11th. Absolutely no way. Um, it'll throw an exception and uh, then you will realize, oh, I'm accessing an element that I shouldn't be accessing, and you can fix your code. C won't do that. In fact, C cannot do that. C is designed, again, to be as low level, as, as direct translation as possible. All C really does is take the burden of register ma uh, management away from you um, and, and handle you know calling functions and so forth in a nicer way than assembly might. Um, and let you create structures and, and et cetera, et cetera. Of course, C does a lot, but, but what C doesn't do is implicitly track things like the number of elements in an array. If you want to track the number of elements in an array and be very careful to check if the array is big enough before you access it, of course, you can write that in C. You can create a structure that has both an array and a size. But realistically, uh, if people do not do that and they just access memory willy-nilly, C will let them do that, and uh, problems will arise. Um, the problems that will arise have to do with some of these other uh, high-level problem causes that I'll talk about. To begin with, um, C mixes control information and data in the same place. You should, be, um, should remember the stack. Uh, you learned about it and uh, ho hopefully had to deal with it a lot in the previous module in reverse engineering, the stack holds a lot of user data. I mean, there's user data actually, the stack starts out holding a lot of user data, but user data throughout the execution of the program spreads all over the place. Unfortunately, in those same general memory regions, programs store a lot of control information. Um, and they store this together with uh, the non-control data that, um, uh, including user data that is stored. Uh, recall the stack, for example. Uh, everything on the stack is just jumbled together. Functions have their function frames on the stack containing the return address. Um, or let's start actually uh, from the, the left here. The local variables of the active function, some of which are user controlled, potentially attacker controlled. Um, saved pointers to other uh, places in memory. For example, the saved um, base pointer for the stack, points elsewhere in the stack, save pointers to code, uh, pointers that are later used uh, to return from the function. Um, and further to the right in, in the stack, further up the stack, um, local variables of the caller function, uh, the, the function of the, that called that function, the function that called that function, and so on. There's a lot of data on the stack, and it's all um, stored together and it's all treated exactly the same, which is 
has serious security implications. Earlier, we talked about accessing the 11th element of a three element array. Well, of course, what happens when you do that in C, if your local buffer is this A array, you end up accessing somewhere in here and writing data directly there. That's really bad news, right? What can you do with that? You can do a lot with that. You can, for example, take a return address that was pointing somewhere in the dot text segment uh, section in um, into the code of the program and change it to point somewhere else or change it to point to some shell code that you injected. If you recall the shell coding module, um, this is a big problem. And in fact, this problem on one sunny day, probably it was sunny somewhere um, in 1988, um, Robert Teppen Morris used this exact situation, a stack based um, buffer overflow where he overflowed from the uh, from some buffer on the stack and, and overwrote the return address. He used this to create the first documented um, uh, memory corruption exploit, as far as I know, launched the first designed worm and brought down the entire internet. We talked about this back when we talked about shell coding, but this is these are the exact bugs that he used to do um, all this damage um, accidentally. Um, the damage was so great that uh, the internet had to be basically shut down, disconnected, fixed all of the machines, and then um, plugged back in. Imagine doing that now, it would be insane. Um, for this, of course, I mentioned before, he was convicted under the um, 1986 Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, but I, I didn't mention um, that he has since uh, become a CS professor, uh, uh, computer science professor at MIT, and co-founded Y Combinator and a bunch of other ventures. So um, he he uh, is doing quite well, despite his shady past. Um, all right, let's move on to problem three. Right, C mixes control data and non-control data in the same way C mixes data and metadata. Right, uh, and this is also problematic. It's very similar, but also problematic. Consider the simplest example is strings. You should all know strings are null terminated in C. When you have a string, you say, you know, uh, the name is Jan. Um, in, in this case, this uh, 10 character array with initial value of Jan holds 10 bytes. Jan and then seven null bytes. Three of these bytes are data, Y, A, and N. And the null byte actually is metadata. It encodes, it says, hey, this is the end of the string. This implicitly encodes the size of the string using just a single byte, right? Um, and the size of the string is basically the beginning of the string up to where the null byte is. Um, this is problematic. Consider if you are just inputting a um, name using uh, the read system call that just gets a bunch of data. Um, and, and you do something like read from standard input into name, and then there's a macro in C that gives you the size of a variable, say so the size of name. This, this looks reasonable at first glance, but there are some problems. First of all, it allows a user to inject null bytes anywhere they want. Read will happily take them. So I could put a null byte instead of um, the A in Jan, and suddenly, instead of a 10 length string, um, I, uh, have inputted a one length string and a bunch of other data, the status of which is um, questionable, right? Uh, because any string operations will terminate on that null byte. Likewise, what if there are no null bytes? This is even worse. If I just fill all 10 variables, uh, all 10 bytes, excuse me, in that variable with data, uh, how long is that string? C, as a reminder, stores no other length information. It has no way to know that this is uh, after compiling the um, um, the code, it has no way to know that this used to be 10 bytes long, right? So further operations on this variable lacking that null byte that encodes its, uh, its length, the string's length, might do weird and crazy things. All right, final high-level problem we'll cover. Um, initialization and cleanup, right? Again, C is very low level. Unless you tell it to, it will not do any initialization. 
or mostly any cleanup. All it will do in terms of cleanup, for example, is um, add to your uh, stack pointer to uh, quote unquote deallocate the stack frame. And I talked about in the previous module how deallocating the stack frame doesn't actually remove any data, right? In the cleanup state, uh, stage, C just moves the stack pointer. That old data is still there. It's just now to the left of the stack pointer. So it doesn't really conceptually exist in a normal program operation, but it's still there. You might still be able to access it if there was a memory error in the program. Likewise, initialization. C won't initialize anything unless you tell it to, unless you explicitly initialize it. Um, if you look at this example, there's a, a character array called my variable and it's of size eight. When I start, uh, when this program launches, sorry, when this function is called, what will be the value of my variable? It won't be nulls. In the previous example, I had this uh, initial um, value. This is an initialization that explicitly initialized my name to these to this value in memory. This has no initial uh, value, and I'm sure that you have created code in C that had no initialization either. Without initialization, it will simply have the value that happened to be there on the stack left over by a previous function. You can try it, create a program like this, run it and see um, what it tells you. Actually, we'll also go through it in a future video more in depth, but it is a major issue um, facing C programs. So th th these are the, the four major problems, initialization, metadata, control data, um, and basically the ability of a developer to shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, is it possible to write secure C code? Absolutely. It's not that C is an insecure language. C gives you the tools to use it in an insecure way if you so wanted to. Um, that's kind of one takeaway I'd like you to take from this course. The other takeaway or from this module. The other takeaway though is in many, 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 many cases, it is very, 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 very easy to misuse C and other low level languages in a way that um, ends up in the creation of insecure code. I'll see you in future videos of this module. We'll go in depth into a couple of different examples of memory corruption. And then we'll talk about mitigations of memory corruptions.